today behold a new week that is before us and we are thankful to our father in heaven who has ushered us into a season of entering his rest a season of liberty in the spirit a season of restoration and a season whereby his grace he will make things beautiful he will sort out things for us we may not see it physically now but let's believe let's trust him and today uh, we just want to remind you we have started to discuss the office of prophet we did on friday we did yesterday sunday and today we're going to a very very critical part of the study on the office of a prophet the office of a prophet signs and pitfalls we're going to be looking at signs of the one called to the office of a prophet we're going to look at pitfalls as you know in the way we teach by the grace of the lord certain things may be repeated or seem to be repeated it is simply an opportunity to expand our understanding and deepen our understanding of particular themes that will have come up before just pay attention it's so important we need to know that the understanding of the signs and the pitfalls will help you to avoid error it will help you to avoid mistake and if you're a prophet, it will help you. If you're one who receives from a prophet, it will help you. And if you bear in mind the reality that just like the apostle, the prophet has stages of growth. So there are baby prophets and there are maturing prophets and there are matured prophets. You will not also cast out the baby with the bathwater just because you see a particular pitfall or a sign that is not fully formed you are not going to reject what the lord has in a vessel that he has appointed to use to minister to you the important thing is that all these studies we are doing they are based on how the lord articulated the scriptures broke it down from the new to the old and brought together a comprehensive perceived view of what each of these five fold is and by the grace of the lord this morning the lord was ministering to me a challenge he said hey you know what at times people have difficulty migrating away from facebook so we're going to create a facility whereby the videos are all put together in a single file on facebook and he showed me what to do and it was so awesome just simple revelation so that anybody who wants to truly understand the fivefold who is not in the master class will be able to have access to all these things on a go so father in heaven we thank you for the opportunity to gather unto you this morning we trust your love we trust your grace we say therefore lord just speak to us as unto your children thank you for answering our prayer holy spirit take the things of yeshua and show us and let the Lord be glorified in the word that will come forth. Build up the saints. Yeshua's mighty name we are prayed. Amen and amen. So brothers and sisters, it's so important that we got to uh, embrace the reality that among the fivefold offices the Father has ordained for his church is the office of a prophet. And one of the things that anyone called to this office must embrace and embrace it as quickly as possible is what Yeshua called all his saints to do, die to self. As a matter of fact, anyone called to the office of a prophet who refuses to die to self is going to make the prophetic office counterproductive. It's going to make the prophetic office and the weight of the revelations that come you know, one can be tempted to exalt oneself beyond what one is. And it can also lead to a situation where the prophet, unconsciously or consciously, begins to try to gather people unto himself, exalt himself, and in this modern era, create a, a profile that you expect people to connect to. And in this environment, you know, we need to understand the prophetic office and mantle is given without repentance. So even if somebody backslides or apostatizes or misses the mark in any way, there can be still flow of revel in revelation, in quotes, whether it's divination, whether it is, um, you know, prophecy. It can still be flowing in a vessel who has fallen away from the faith or who has stumbled. So 
People can be confused, but heaven is not confused. And so it's very important that we understand these signs very well. What are the signs? Number one, from a point of view of safety, is that the manner of life should validate the ministry. This, said, this was said by Yeshua himself in Matthew chapter 7. Matthew 7, it says in verse 15, There were false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of tongues or figs of taste tools? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Then he said in verse 20, Yeshua, the head of the kingdom, the king of the kingdom, the head of the church, verse 20 of Matthew 7, wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. Somebody called to be an office of prophet. He didn't say go to know them by their revelation. Go to know them by what they bring for you, by their fruits, you shall know them. And not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So it is, it is needful. There's a point he's making here. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name I have cast out devils, and in thy name I have done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk in iniquity. So it's important that a prophet called by the Lord must have three fruits that are implied here. Number one, a clear testimony of salvation. That's what you see in Matthew, Matthew 7, 13 and 14. There used to be, there was a time in Nigeria, <clears throat> somebody just rose up from nowhere to prophesy, do many things. And the thing, who many people were mature were afterwards, oh, this man is gathering crap. But the question is, what is his testimony? Everybody knew him to be one of those they call white garment type of people. So suddenly... The beard is gone. The hair is now tidied up. But where is it evidence of testimony? Where is the testimony of salvation? And brothers and sisters, these days where people can come now, especially now we are all on social media, it is important that somebody has to have a clear testimony of an encounter with the Lord. That's the root. Number two, fruit of the Spirit should be evident in the life of the prophet because great infusion of divine mysteries have come forth. It's also important that it be backed up by a life where truly there is a pursuit of holiness. And number three, there should be an unwillingness on the part of the prophet not to touch the glory of Yahweh in speech or attitude. One thing you can know false prophet by and people who are uh, you know, having real issues with Elohim is tendency to boast in their works, including their predictions. So you see some people, they compile, they did this, they did that, they did this, they said this, they said that, it happened, and they, they are trying to tell you why you must listen to them, because their prophecy is always coming through. Once you see that type of advertising, please be very much on your guard. True prophets will seek to decrease so that they can push Yeshua, the head of the kingdom. And therefore, it is also the onus is on all of us who will receive ministry from prophets to truly ascertain those three benchmarks in the life of the prophet. Don't be in a pressure anyway to accept somebody by title or whatever somebody says without checking it out. We are told in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits for that they are of him because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Remember what we say yesterday, and please, if you miss yesterday's lesson, honestly speaking, in this series on the Office of Prophet, you will have missed a great thing. Try to take it. Get it. It's on Facebook, so that your learning can be complete. Half and half knowledge is very dangerous. Please try and get it. So I want to say this to you. It's so important in this era 
that you guard your life with diligence. They are real prophets called by the Lord. They may not have great names or big names, but they are genuine, they are legit. But there are also many people, especially big names, who have actually missed it. I don't know whether I've said it enough. Prophets are going to play a leading role in preparing the church to embrace the Antichrist. And one of them, a chief one, a major religious figure is the one who will validate the Antichrist and lead people to buy and sell with the mark of the beast, with the number of the beast and his name. Revelation 13 and 14, one of them, one leader, church leader, the church will produce a false prophet and the government system, the political system will produce the Antichrist. These things are so clear. From Daniel, all through to Thessalonians to Revelation. So, brothers and sisters, this time to guide your soul with all diligence. Another sign, number two, is lifestyle of prayer and deep communion with Holy Spirit. The true prophet knows that of his own self or her own self, there is nothing to give the people. So, there's a tendency, therefore, to stay in the presence of Elohim in deep prayer and constant communion with Holy Spirit, whether at work or in business, on the way, there's that communion, and Holy Spirit is downloading to the spirit man. In this state, there's a yieldedness and surrender of his or her vessel for the Lord to use to the degree that Holy Spirit can lay hold of the vessel at any time of his choosing to bring forth the word. And I would recommend to prophets today, keep a record that's very close to you. Because it could come when you are driving, it could come upon you when you are sleeping, it could come upon you when you are sleeping, you wake up, it could come upon you anytime. In this modern era, it would be nice to keep a record, and once it comes upon you, and you know that Holy Spirit is tearing you up, you open your mouth, you press your, you press your record, let him feel it, and bring forth words for the people. Number three, accuracy of the word he or she brings forth, which lines up. With the written word of Yahweh, that's a qualifying, lines up. In other words, even if somebody shares an accurate word and says something that seems accurate, if that thing does not lead you into perfection in Yeshua, if that thing leads you away from the word, something is wrong. The Holy Scriptures represent the framework of the mind of Elohim for humanity. Now, he's going to give some now word but those now words will not contradict what is written in the word. As I've shared with you many times, any time thus says the Lord contradicts it is written, wrong for your life. When Yeshua, the spring and source of all wisdom, the chief prophet of the church was encountering Satan. He could have used anything to speak to Satan, but he used it is written. He was given us a sign. And in that state of asymmetric spiritual warfare, Yeshua overcame by the word. It is written. Again, it is written. And Satan tried to take the word and twist it, but the superior one from Yeshua brought it forth. So we got to make sure that the word is rightly divided. And therefore, if a prophet, for instance, listen, if you don't, if you don't take this um, uh, particular point into your heart, a situation may arise where a prophet can mislead you. Let's say you in a a service, a prophet comes, uh, hired by your pastor, he comes as a visiting prophet and begins to prophesy, personal prophecy, he comes to a, a lady, oh, no, 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 no. You've been married for three years, five years, say, oh, lady, you missed it. You missed it. You missed it. Eh? You, you, you married, say, yes, how long, say, three, four years ago? Uh, are you enjoying the ladies in his state? I said, you know what? You missed the will of God for yourself and you will never make it, no matter how hard you try. It seems authoritative. But if that lady knows Elohim and knows the word, he knows that he has, she has met a false prophet right there. And the best way is to leave that environment. Because if she takes what he's told her, she'll go and chuck out the husband and go get herself another husband. And what has she done? Does it line up with the word? And they were believers and they married in the Lord. Listen to this. True prophecy will confirm the word and will be confirmed by the word. It will not take you out of the word. Whenever you see, talk says the Lord, contradicts, it is written. 
strong for your life as fast as your leg can carry you. Number four, sign of the prophet is a willingness to speak expressly, except expressly prompted by Holy Spirit. So you don't just rattle words. You don't just go speaking whatever you want. No, you are careful not to speak. And that's why true prophets don't speak anyhow. They just don't engage in arguments and debates and all that. We are told in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 7 that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. It is, every time a prophecy goes forth, it's a manifestation of Holy Spirit. It's not you. You didn't determine it. It's Holy Spirit bringing forth a word through you. So if you're a prophet, make yourself come to a place where you don't just talk for because others are talking. You speak when he manifests. You open your mouth when he manifests. It's not you that turn him on. It's he that turns you on. It's he that chooses when to use you. Number five is the willingness to submit. Prophets are known for the obedience to the law of submission because they are people who wield great authority. The office of prophet wields great authority. So they too will be tested in how they submit to higher authorities as Romans chapter 13, 1 to 7 says. And because of that, whenever a prophet manifests my way or the highway attitude, pride are setting and the spirit of control is at work. And to try to use that office to manipulate those who lead the prophet to do his or her bidding is a danger. For instance, the prophet is part of a team and has an overseer, you know, or an apostle who is experienced in the gospel and they are there together. Uh, you know, it is wrong for the prophet to use prophecy to make everything done in the ministry to be just what he wants, what he wants, and say, you know what, this is, you know, and try to pull rank? No. A true prophet, as they grow, there is something in them that makes them submit to authority without struggle. Excuse me. <clears throat> One second. <clears throat> so prophets, as authorities, will bear that law that every soul is subject to the higher powers. Number six is a willingness to have their prophecies judged to determine the source and direction of what is offered. True prophets know that nobody has absolute knowledge. You see, here where we teach you, for instance, in the apostolic teaching ministry, we tell you, please, if you notice anything off base, draw our attention to it. Anything. Draw attention to it. Why? We know in part we see in part as First Corinthians chapter 14, 29 to 33 says, So no prophet comes and says, No one has spoken and spoken. Nobody should judge my word. No. We are told that prophets should speak. Look at First Corinthians 14 says, 29. Let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that seated by, let the first hold his peace. For ye all may prophesy one by one, that all may learn, and that all may be comforted. And the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For Elohim is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. So, so it, it's only pride that will make a prophet to refuse this facility which Yahweh ordained for safety of the most vulnerable people in the church. Men and brethren, spiritual babes cannot discern truth from error, a prophecy from manifestations of soulish utterance. So there is provision that when somebody has given a word, there should be people who are elders in the house who can judge where is this coming from. Is it coming from a wound in the heart? Is it coming from a soul that is diseased? Is it coming from you know a place of malice? Is it a word of Elohim? Or is it a mixture? There should be judgment. Number seven, holiness of life is a sign of the prophet. Because of their access to the throne of grace, prophets seem to they seek they tend to see deeper into the state of their own soul and are therefore more inclined to keep pressing into the fullness of the depth of Yahweh. In this way, the pursuit of excellence 
in holiness is something that comes naturally. You know, Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 6, the prophet of Israel, in the year that King Hosea died, he went to the temple, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple, and the glory he saw revealed to him the depth of his own iniquity. He said, Woe is me, I'm a man of unclean lips. The man who had been prophesying, who dwelt amongst an unclean people, and the father had to send angels to take tongues of fire, you know, coals of fire from the uh, altar and touch him and sanctify him. Number eight is healthy disdain for the flash in the pan fantasies of Babylon, the world system. Prophets know that they cannot intermingle with the world system because of their intimacy with Yeshua and deep communion with the Holy Spirit, which they find so satisfying. The fancies of the world system, which many born to possess, does not move them. As a matter of fact, they are very careful that what is so popular in the world does not enter their heart because it's one thing that the enemy can use to corrupt the prophetic flow in them. The number nine sign is humility and willingness to accept mistakes made and ensure repentance and correction where necessary. And this includes repentance when he or she misses it concerning any prophetic utterance, you know. So whenever they, 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 there's a missing in the prophetic utterance, you know, they're able to repent, they're able to say, well, you know what, I missed it. And so human nature is not perfect. So a prophet may see certain things, but in communicating them, it, there may be miscommunication. One should be able to hold it up. It's not it's something that could happen to anybody. So there's no need doubling down on it, whether you like it or not. No, a prophet may know in part as a result of cultural filters or strongholds in the mind or experiences. It can make one to judge a sight one see. That's why when you see, as in symbols and types, just declare what you see and allow those who have the grace of interpretation to weigh in so that one does not miss it because what you see in types and symbols may not necessarily be like that. So brothers and sisters, these are nine pitfalls we've been able to document. They obviously there have been many more. So, I mean, nine signs that we're able to document and there'll be many more. Now, let what are the pitfalls? Let's now talk about the pitfalls. Brothers and sisters, if there's an office where warning about the pitfall of the prophetic is articulated it was the office of the prophet is more than any other one to the degree that in Matthew 24 Yeshua said in verse 11 you know and many false prophets shall arise and deceive many many false prophets shall arise and deceive many then in verse 24 for there shall arise false messiahs and false prophets false messiahs and false prophets so remember, Antichrist is a false messiah, and false prophets shall show great signs and wonders in as much as if it were possible, they will deceive the very elect. No. Warning, Revelation 2, 14. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balaam to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Stay warning. In verse 20, stay warning about having someone who called herself a prophetess. So there are many warnings. In 2 Peter chapter 2, look at what we are told from verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring out upon themselves swift destruction. And many, many, not few, many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be even spoken of. And through covetousness shall they be fain with fain words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. So the gift and calling of the prophet is without repentance. So what it means is even if the person misses it on a small thing, or even backslides, or even go into apostasy, the ability to speak accurately about the future may still operate. 
Romans 11, 29. The difference is this. Whereas that, that person who was a true prophet and spoke the word of Elohim and lived right, in the last day, fulfilling the office of prophet will earn that person great rewards in the eternity to come. The person who misuses the office, misuses the gift, the person who misuses the calling, the person who you know, allows himself to drift away from the truth or from the way of rectitude, that very drifting away will not become an instrument of judgment on the last day. And in Hebrews 6, 4 to 8, and Hebrews 10, 26 to 31, we are warned that people should not drift away from the truth because there will be no more, no more repentance, no more payment of price for sin. If people willfully sin after they come to knowledge of Yeshua. So having said that, let's look at some clear pitfalls. Number one, Satan's entrapment. Satan will always target those called to this high office. And that's why it is so important for those who are called to walk in understanding that Satan is after the mantle. Is after the mantle. And therefore, he's going to try to corrupt the mantle so that through it he can corrupt all the people who the prophet speaks into. So we got to be sober and vigilant because the adversary walks about like a roaring lion as first Peter 5, 8 to 9 says, and resist him steadfastly in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished by brethren who are in the world. And James 4, 7 says, submit yourself therefore to Elohim, resist the devil, he flee from you. Any prophet who loses sight of the fact that Satan is on the loose trying to grab the mantle in different ways and to try different ways. He can try to anyone, family members, he can try to anything. He can try to with colleagues at work, he can try to people in the church, he can use anyone to provoke or to try to pierce through the armor of the prophet. That's why prophets must be careful to walk a little bit. That's why the Lord has programmed them to seem to, you know, even though they stay among crowd, they are very comfortable when they are a little bit lonely because they stay in the secret place. Number two, a pitfall that every prophet will warn or is warned against is soulishness. We are human beings with spirit where the Holy Spirit lives and where the prophetic mantle is, but we also have souls mind that thinks, imagination that sees, memory that stores the past. We have emotion that responds to external stimuli. We have will that makes decision on what to do. So the biggest problem of a prophet will be the soul, not outside. If your soul is not whole, if you are not together, if you don't have inner healing and deliverance, and you have a prophetic mantle, there's a problem. And you really need inner healing. Because in the state of some issues inside your soul, maybe low self-esteem, maybe anger, maybe offense, maybe the jealousy, maybe malice, these things all are in the soul realm. And when those things are in, they'll become a filter. So even if you Elohim was speaking through you, when it's filtered through malice or offense or jealousy or envy, automatically there's a problem and it's going to be impure and for those who are tattlers they think they must talk on everything everything every political thing they must talk on da, 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 da. Matthew 12 36 says but I saw unto you that every idle word that men shall speak they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment every idle word so make sure you don't speak anything the father didn't say you don't speak your supposition. When you are not sure, don't say, don't say, thus says the Lord, except you know it is thus says the Lord. You can say, you know what, I have, I have this impression in my heart, or I just think, or, you know, can we try this? Make sure you don't use thus says the Lord so often to the degree that it becomes a way of speaking that you can even mix up your own word. So it's a pitfall. Soulishness is a pitfall. A, a past, a prophet with inner healing issues is going to be a danger to him or herself and danger to those who hear him. Three, pride of life. 
Yahweh hates pride and resists pride. He personally resists pride. This one is not human, but he resists pride. Pride will cause a prophet to seek glory for the words uttered. Whereas they are the words of Yahweh for the people, and the prophet wants to. He should know. Every prophet should know that is a mere conduit. A mere conduit. A vessel, just as I have this water here. Okay, the prophetic mantle makes you a vessel which the Father can use anytime. So, how do you handle it? In humility, in gratitude. Otherwise, you create a problem for yourself. James 4, 6 says, But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he said, Elohim, resist the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. So we've got to know, First Corinthians chapter 4, 7 says, So who maketh thee to differ from another? What hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why does that glory as if thou didst not receive it? It's not by your power. You are not plucking out prophecy from your mind. You are not plucking it from your memory. If you do, it's corrupt. Prophecy comes real time, on time. Downloading of the mind of the Father passing through your vessel. Number four, pitfall is using prophecy to manipulate and control saints. And that is a very dangerous thing. When prophecy is used, to make sense to be ever remain babes. They just gather around. They put huge signs, come and get a word for today. People begin to gather, gather, gather. And all they are going to hear a word for today. And they cannot handle tomorrow with the Lord. They come to hear with the prophet. And the prophet begins to manipulate them before you can do anything in life before you can move from one city to the other, before you can take a job, before you can marry, before you can choose a career, you must hear from the prophet. Once this is done, the people will remain perpetual babes. They will not grow. Just hearing the word of a prophet to guide their life, they think they are doing well. Oh, by a prophet, he took them out of Egypt. By a prophet, he took them to the prophet, promised land. You begin to believe that, you will make the people to remain babes. They will not be perfected. They will not grow. They won't hear the voice of their father independently. And that's a dangerous place to be. Number five is covetousness or prophecy for profit. Where prof true prophets live frugally. You know, there are people, you know, they, they, they've learned to be able to abase and abound. If there is money, praise the Lord. If there's no money, praise the Lord. They are not under any pressure. True prophets, you know, Paul said in Philippians 3, 17 to 19, Brethren, be ye followers of me as I'm, I mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. He said, mark them who walk like us. For many walk, of whom I've told you often, now tell you often weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Yeshua, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shape, who mind earthly things. You see, when you see prophets try to accumulate everything the people of the world have and get into competition and do it all, something is wrong and it's dangerous. And if you love the prophet and you know somebody like that, you try to encourage that person to check up. You know, so men and brethren, the Bible says in, Philipp in Hebrews 5, Hebrews 13, 5, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. As you said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not mind what man shall do unto me. True prophets like Paul, they learn how to abase and how to abound. They learn how to enjoy what the Lord gives, and when there is nothing, they learn how to leave. They tighten their belt, and so the ungodly ways of fundraising in Africa and Asia and the Western world must be avoided. The idea that when the prophets come after prophesying, people are zapped up, then the host pastor say, prophet, please raise funds for us. It's dangerous because the person who is giving money as a result of that fundraising may think that he's going to activate the gift to mean the prophecy. Or even when the prophet gives a word, somebody comes and says, you know what, let's come and activate this prophecy. Once you hear that something is wrong, Please, those of you ministers, don't be too zealous to do some funny stuff. You don't activate prophecy. It's a word from the Father. If you need to use money to activate it, there is not his word. There is a prophet's word. Let's 
chuck out into the bin all these things. And when you see people try to do it, please correct them. It is wrong to use money to activate prophecy. It is not New Testament. These are traditions of men, and it is Babylonian in the extreme. Number six, misuse of points of contact to lead the people into idolatry or syncretism. Point of contact is biblical. Oh, Yeshua used point of contact for Yeshua himself. He once, you know, facilitated healing. If you read John 9, 1 to 7, point of contact. Even use clay one time. Put spittle on clay and use it to touch somebody. Use it. People touch his hem, hem of his garment and were healed. Paul the apostle, handkerchiefs were taken from his body for healing the sick. It's a point of contact. Peter's shadow, when he touched people, they were healed. Points of contact are biblical. But what is not biblical is to make them carnal and then begin to make them so cheap and so ordinary. Oh, this handkerchief. If you can just sow a seed of uh, $200 and pick it up every night, keep it under your pillow. You won't have bad, bad dreams again. That's dangerous. When you begin to excessively use point of contact, it can lead saints to carnality. They no longer have faith to trust to hear the Father. They no longer have faith in what has been preached. The point of contact becomes a little idol. They look at it that way. They hold it that way. And before you know it, they are carrying idols right with them. And this can offend the unseen Elohim. Number seven, pitfall is carnality in engaging in prophetic actions or prophetic parables without direction of Holy Spirit. Prophetic prayer actions are also biblical. In the days of Jeremiah, Yahweh had directed him to undertake a number of actions that seemed bizarre. One of these was to go and test the house of the Rechabites and say, drink wine. And they said, Jeremiah, our father told us never to drink wine. You will not be a national prophet, but we will obey our father. On one occasion, Yahweh told him to go and buy and destroy jars of clay to demonstrate the impending destruction of Judah. Brothers and sisters, points of contrast have been used. Each one was as directed by the Lord himself. And so, Agabus once took the belt of Paul and said, the one whose belt is this, he'll be bound. But when prophets begin to carnally invent prophetic actions, they set saints on a path of error where they, they want to see that demonstration that the prophet did. And, and that's where their faith is, no longer on the one that sent the prophet. That's why it can be very terrible. Number eight, boasting over prophetic skills. Once you see boasting and boasting about what you prophesied and this and that and what, and you want to use it to make a name for yourself, is a pitfall that must be avoided. And nine, suppositions that a human can transfer the mantle of office of a prophet at will. You see that today. And brothers and sisters, it's wrong. You can't establish a school of prophets. Admit anyone who can pay the required fee. And then at the end, you say you are going to make them prophets. Oh, no. No. Uh -uh. It's not so. It's Elohim that calls the prophets. It's him that gives the mantle. If somebody was not giving the mantle, you cannot make him because he attended your school of prophets. No, we got to be careful so that we don't chip on this thing. Ephesians 4, 11 shows that it's Yeshua that chooses. But listen to this on the other hand. A prophet can be used to mentor another one called to be a prophet and mentor the person to excellence like Elijah and Elisha. But it was Yahweh that called Elisha. Elisha. Now, and then Grumbe uh, uh, asked uh, Elijah to mentor him. But you cannot on your own make anybody a prophet. But in conclusion, brothers and sisters, we want to say this. There's growth in the prophetic. Somebody starts as a baby prophet. Don't despise. Don't reject. Don't push back. Even if that person makes mistake. If you are going to correct, do it gently, do it graciously, do it prayerfully, and let be led by Holy Spirit. Don't throw away the baby with the bathwater because the young shall grow. The young eagle of today, the eaglet of today, will be the eagle soaring tomorrow. And so let's be patient with them, let's pray for them, let's support them, 
And if somebody is not manifesting, let's be careful how we handle it. From baby prophet will become a maturing prophet and will gain more confidence. The word speaking will be more accurate and at the end of the day will come to become a mature prophet, fully settled. And brothers and sisters, the Lord loves us. That's why he's bringing all these things to enable us so that we don't make the mistake that people made before where the prophetic is one of the most misused offices all over the world. You see people gathering crowd that stay with them 10 years coming there to hear prophecy. And they were where they were five years ago, 10 years ago. That is a negation of the office of prophet. Office of prophet is to empower, is to perfect, is to enable. So a prophet should also engage in the teacher process just as an apostle, as an evangelist, as a pastor, as a teacher. Teach, train, equip, activate, and release. Now let me say this. If you work with a prophet, there can be an activation of whatever revelatory gifts are in you. And that is good. It's a good thing where prophets are, they should activate the prophetic, but they can't make anybody a prophet on their own. So let us receive these things. The assignment for today, out of the nine signs of the prophet, which five resonated most in your heart? Why is it so? Tell us. Number two, out of the nine pitfalls, please share five which ministered most to you. And so these are the assignments for today. I want to say this to you. Let's continue. Tomorrow, we're going to go into Office of the Prophet, part four, negative trends that must be stopped so that we can know them. And I want to say this to you. Be diligent. Let's get it all. And let's observe. And let's pray. And let's uphold. And let's also make sure we do not allow anybody to trap us in the soul and capture our soul. And then we are like a bed trap. But the Bible says, the snare is broken. We are clean escaped. I believe there is a breaking of snare right now. And some of you who have been addicted to some people on YouTube, and hey, they can look at the miracle, look at the miracle. And you have been trapped there. You need to be delivered from it so that you can become who the Lord called you to be. We're going to pray now and then we'll make some announcements. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your goodness, for your mercy, for your loving kindness. The word that has come forth, Father, we pray that you will use it to minister to everybody, deliver everyone, take away everything that is not of you, and help us to embrace this powerful office you ordain in the body. Help us to embrace and receive in every assembly, in every congregation, in every network, Father, in every city. Let there arise prophets sent by you, called by you. Thank you for answering our prayer. It is awesome to see what you are trying to do to bring reformation in the body. In Yeshua's mighty name we pray, amen and amen. Now let's just take we're oh, sorry we took a few extra minutes, uh, six extra minutes. But please, if you wouldn't mind, let me just see whether there's any bad day so we can know whether we can celebrate them uh, to, together. And um, remember, very soon we're going to tell you the day. Okay, one of them is uh, um, Apostle Primrose Kurima of IMF Zimbabwe and Jonik Johnson of the USA, Ivanda Broom, I think in, in Sweden. Also, and um, also Kathleen Weekly, Paul Tran, Charles Brooks, Kendall Porter, and Curtis Steven, and Morizo Sobudizi, and Anthony Davis, and George Mora, these parties. And you know what? We love you dearly. Tomorrow we continue the office of a prophet. Thank you so much, Elect, for being with us on the camera.